Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Field Trips. You remember, we are still down in San Luis Pass. Yesterday, we got so far from home and turned around against the current that we actually came and took out at a different spot. And so today, we're gonna play the tide smarter. And we drove over here. Madeline and Heather Moore, these hooligans behind me, uh, just dropped us off. They're gonna take the trucks back. And basically this way, we'll be able to kind of drift with the current back uh, in and out instead of fighting it all day, so. Uh, Rex Del Rey showed up. They're all in the water already. Doc and I are the stragglers. We're just now getting launched. But it's going to be a good day. We figured something out yesterday. Hopefully today we can find some fish. We'll see. Yeah, have fun. We'll see you later. So what we figured out last time is that started to figure out a pattern the first day, struggled, couldn't find any keepers, and we finally got it done towards the end of the day. Basically all our bites came near sunset. So hopefully today we can start figuring out a pattern a little sooner, but we came to a pretty close to the area that we were catching them last time. Paddle tails being hopped off the bottom is how I'm getting all my bites, but got plenty of other techniques ready to go in case that's not working today. Every day is a new day. You got to figure out the pattern for that day. So common mistake to make is ah, I caught fish yesterday doing X. I'm gonna do X all day today. Does not always work. Sometimes sure, but a lot of times you gotta kind of figure it out, start from scratch. I got some flounder. Flounder. Small one, I think. Let me see it, let me see it. I put, put, put it in his face. This little guy, all I ever catch around here. Little tater chip. Little tater chip. Still looking for my first keeper, Texas flounder. We're on the right track. Popping cork fish up against the grass. No, sir. The key with these flounder, they like to bite it and kind of spit it out and come back for it. You gotta, you gotta kind of give them a second. And that one, the cork went down, I didn't move it. And then it went back down again, and I gave it a good, like, two Mississippi, set the hook, and had him. See if we can't replicate that. <laughs> Another flounder! I was just sitting there with my cork right next to me. Just went to reel it in, pull it out of the water, and this guy was on there. I think he had just picked it up, just got lucky with the timing. Another small flounder on the popping cork. Out here on this, this kind of sand flat, which is right where they should be. Whoops. Well, still can't find a keeper. This is basically the story of my life with flounder in Texas. I, I catch them all the time. Tail's gone on that. I catch them all the time, but they're always about this size. I just never catch keepers. I don't know what it is. I'm just like cursed, but I'm going to keep after it. We'll find them eventually. Where there's small ones, there should be bigger ones. So it's actually very appropriate that I'm out here fishing with Rex Del Rey, throwing a popping cork for redfish because the day I met Rex, he took me out inshore fishing for my first time ever. He showed me what a popping cork was. He showed me how to use it. And we went out and fished a, a redfish tournament and he still gives me, gives me crap about it. But uh, he actually got skunked during the tournament and I caught two keeper reds and took fifth place. Uh, you know, just beginner's luck. You know, I was using his bait, his rig, his cork at his spot, the whole, I mean, the whole thing. But, you know, we've been we've been kicking it ever since. And it's funny, uh, it's always cool to come back and, you know, something that the way I met him six years ago, we're out here doing basically the exact same thing and uh, just having some fun. But yeah, every time I throw the popping cork, I think old Rex and how the redfish were just being good to me that day and not him. <laughs> Pretty sure I bought lunch with the winnings, I think. I hope I did. All right, Max Moore is hooked up. Heard him hooting and hollering, looked over, and he's getting drug around. What is it? Nice, red fish from Max, trying to get it in the boat. <laughs> nice, look at that. That looks like a keeper. 21 and a half, keeper red from Max Moore. Max Moore fishing, you gotta check him out on YouTube. He does this all the time. First keeper, first keeper of the day, buddy. Nice work. Max here is 13, and he can fish with the best of them. One down, two more to go. Yep. Fish on. Same spot I just caught that little flounder. I came up here and anchored up current of it. Tossed right back in there, and I've got 
redfish. He looks undersized. All right, guys, we're figuring out a pattern now, though. He uh, got hooked a little deep, so let him on quick. They're definitely out on the flat cruising. That's partially because the overcast and partially because the tide is basically, we're basically a low tide now. So they they have to pull out of those marshes and out of those grass lines and get into some places with some water. Man, if he's five inches, I'm keeping him. We're gonna stuff that flounder with some blue crab. He's not, little guy. There we go, rinse and repeat. It's not big, but uh, same pattern. I mean, we, I'm figuring something out. We're just gonna have to weed through these smaller fish, I think, but there's another red. Now, normally if I was catching a bunch of small fish, I would, I would assume that something about my technique is the reason, and I would be actually be switching it up to maybe something similar, maybe without the cork, but Max just gotta keep her with the cork, so it tells me I just probably just need to be patient, but there we go. Mark that guy in the angler app, and I'm actually gonna also double tap the bullseye to remember this little gut here, because there's a, a consistent bite right here. Rex has got something small over there too. We're, we're figuring something out on this flat. Just cast back out there and see if I can't put it in a bigger one's face. Fish on something a little better. On the popping cork. Rex and I just came over here to a different side of this channel. And uh looks like a redfish, like a diesel. It's definitely the strongest fish I've caught today. It is a redfish. Looks like a keeper. I think it's keeper red. Oh yeah, definitely keeper. Nice, good one, dude. That might be big fish of the trip. Finally, a little persistence paying off here. Huh? Nice. Yeah, that's a real nice one. Definitely big fish of the trip for me. Beautiful fish. Look at that. Got multiple spots out. Two on one side, four on the other. That is a keeper redfish. Yoo! Finally. God, my hands were already torn up. Now I'm playing with this guy. Ow! Oh no. Oh no. Oh. Ow. I'm gonna string this guy up. See if we can't find some more. Rex and I came over here. The a mission, a goal, a, a, a feeling that maybe there would be some fish on this opposite side of the channel. Came up here and there's a giant sandbar, giant sandbar, birds all over it. And I just came down here to the end of it. And uh, there she was. We'll try to keep replicating that, see if we can't pick up a few more. Got dinner going now, boys. Yep, 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 fish on. Starting to kind of give up on this area. It's real shallow here. The tide's starting to come back in, and this might be another keeper red. Maybe, maybe a little under. It's definitely not fighting as hard as the last one I caught. But it is a redfish. Oh uh, yeah, he might be a keeper. Oh. Let's see. So I've been catching him on the popping cork. This was on just the paddle tail. Went for something a little more subtle because it's so shallow here. This guy was in about a foot of water. And now theoretically, as the tide starts coming in, they should be starting to kind of stage up to head back up into the marsh. And I'm kind of at a, at a good opening to the marsh right here. And that was my thought process and it looks like it paid off. Nice. He might go 20. It's gonna be close. 20 and a half, just under 20 and a half. That is keeper number two for the day. The limit is three, so I got one more to go. Phew, nice. Definitely has not been on fire, but it has been steady. And really just kind of persistence is the name of the game. Just not giving up. They're out here, they're cruising. This overcast has them cruising. Let's see if we can't find some more. <laughs> That's the ticket right there. This is what was working yesterday. This little baby paddle tail. Super simple presentation. That is, in my opinion, if you had to pick one thing to fish for redfish with, I'm fishing with something like that. It's getting it done.
GoPro start recording. Oh, first one. Oh, he looks, he looks legal. Oh, man. I'm in like super skinny shell. And I started noticing the reds were like stacked up in these any little deep holes. So normally I ended up just finding out it was a deep hole spooking like, you know, two or three reds. So this one, this hole I saw and I just kind of waited and then just cast into it before I spook him. We'll see if he's a keeper. 20 and a half. He's a keeper. How cool would it be if I caught a limit back here? Nice, Chris Moore is hooked up. The bite slowed down. Maybe it's turning back on. Chris Moore's rocking the yak fish hat. You can shop my merch, there's a link in the description if you want to check it out. Great way to support the show. Chris is a big time supporter, awesome guy. And uh, I haven't gotten a bite in about an hour. He's got some on now. Nice. Just under. Just under. 21. 21. First keeper of the day for Chris Moore. Nice work, man. Bite's been tough the last hour. That's that's the most impressive catch I've seen yet. So where with bass fishing, really the important thing is cover. And by cover, I mean boulders, logs, pilings, uh, bass stick to cover. A lot of people call it structure, but really cover are those kinds of things, whereas structure is more so the contours, the, the bottom, the shape of the bottom. A lot of people say fish sticking to structure, but what they mean is fish sticking to cover. And with bass fishing, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Hold that thought. This one's smaller, smaller red. <laughs> We're figuring something out, ladies and gents. I haven't moved a muscle since uh, I just lost that one and, and the last keeper that I caught. That guy right there is the ticket. Beautiful fish, just a little guy. Let him go to grow bigger, we'll cast right back out. But like I was saying, with bass fishing, cover is what you're looking for, that's what you're focusing on. Bass stick to cover. Redfish do not. For catching redfish, structure is much more important. Basically, water flow with the tides is what dictates where redfish feed and when. And so the bottom is what you really want to be looking at, not worried about pilings or uh, anything like that. Now, oyster is kind of the one exception, but they're not using that as cover, they're just feeding off of it. But structure dictates where the water flows go in and out with the tides, and that carries food, and that is what redfish are doing. So anytime, you gotta kinda think about the tide movement and what redfish would do to follow food. So as the tide fills up, it opens up new water into the marsh, and the redfish will go into that. So at slack tide, low tide, you gotta think that they gotta be kinda staging up at the mouths, getting ready to move up in, and kinda vice versa. If it's an outgoing tide, the end of the outgoing, if you stick in kind of the main entrances to those marsh uh, pockets, typically you can catch reds as they kind of come out uh, following that rot water receding. So um, that's kind of my mindset all day when I'm fishing for redfish. I'm trying to think, what's the tide doing? And then what does that mean? What would the redfish be doing if they were looking for an easy meal? And right now we're here at the big opening to a nice big marsh system. And uh, the tide just started coming back in. And so they're here kind of staging up, getting ready to move up in whenever they can. Consistent results. That's that's three bites in five minutes since I got to this opening. Bouncing gulp off the bottom. Same strategy, found another little deep pocket. Yep, yep. Def, it's a good one, man. 
Good one, good fish, good fish. He's not wanting to come in. Get over here. Using this new favorite uh, six stick and one of their reels on it. Just started using these, really, really liking them so far. Uh, just super sensitive, it cast a mile. Oh yeah, good fish, good fish. And uh, they've got the backbone to, to even get in these these solid slot reds. It's a, it's a pretty decent one. Definitely gonna be over 20, without a doubt. Oh yeah, fatty. Got some shoulders on her. Oh, this might be big fish of the trip. This one's pushing like my other one. Ah. Yoo-hoo-hoo! Yeah, buddy. Haven't moved since the last two I caught. Just, just chilling. They're cruising around here in numbers, in force, and even better, they're feeding. We've been seeing plenty of reds all trip, but they're finally really chewing. And uh, you know, who knows what changed. Easy, easy. Feel her tensing up. 23 and a quarter. Uh-uh, uh-uh, don't you do it. Got my limit. It's just always so rewarding when you have to grind out a pattern, figure something out, weed through some small fish, and then, you know, use something that, that you've learned about fish's behavior and, you know, how the tides affect what these redfish do, and then for it to just kind of come together, uh, be able to get a limit, limit of organic, lean protein to take home, there's just nothing better. And to do it in a kayak, kind of get there and home under your own power, it just makes it all that much more gratifying and rewarding. But that right there is a limited redfish, y'all. Texas limit anyways. Does make me miss Louisiana where you can keep five, but uh, fun, fun day. Oh wow, look, we got dolphins over here smacking fish with their tails, that is so cool. There they are cruising, but I just saw them smacking the surface with their tails, much like, look at that. Doing that to stun fish and then gobble them up. I'm glad they're just, look at that. How cool to observe these animals. Look at that, doing their thing. So we're gonna head back and cook up some fish. So stay tuned, stick around, see you back at camp. All right guys, a killer day red fishing. Got our limit. And we still have those red fish from last time you guys saw when we just gutted them uh, and Rex kind of showed us a pretty cool trick for doing that. So we're gonna cook these up and we're gonna do something a little unconventional for you guys. Instead of the same old cook them on the half shell or you know, fillet them up and fry them, we're gonna show you how to prepare a part of the redfish that often ends up in the trash, the throats. And Rex always calls them like kind of redfish chicken wings. They look like chicken wings. We're gonna grill those up. Rex is gonna show us how to remove the throat from a redfish, how to clean that. We're gonna be using these Gerber shears, which are super cool. They're, they're basically shears, but they come apart into two separate knives also. So a very versatile tool, and they're perfect for pulling out these redfish throats. So Rex, do the honors. Throw it so far, so I just cut right here, the shears. Kind of detach it. The hardest part's removing the gills, really. And then here, you just have so good, having some good shears to cut through that bone. Nothing right here. And then it'll be kind of like this. So what I do is I kind of I break the bone. Sort of almost like butterfly it almost. Kind of flatten it out. All right, so these Gerber shears actually come apart and there's a, a descaler, a scaler, right on one of the halves. Pretty slick, show them that edge. Right here? Yep. Perfect for scaling fish. It's also got that is for like ripping through the gut, you know. Oh, sweet. That little point. It's a pretty cool little tool, man. You can do a lot. So there's these little baby scales here. You want to take those off because we're going to grill them. All right. And there it is. So that is a redfish throat. We call them saltwater quail. Saltwater quail. It does kind of look like a bird. Yeah, it does. And it does look like chicken wings. After we grill them up, you guys will see what that looks like, but that is great meat right there, and that is meat that is often wasted, often thrown away, because after you flay the fish, that's left behind. But that is that is primo right there. Tastes like chicken. Tastes like chicken. All right guys, so it's the next morning. We did not feel like cooking throats last night. It got late, took forever, we had to get cleaned up. Now they're getting ready to pack up, but for lunch, we're cooking up these redfish throats. We're gonna do them super simple. So we're laying out our throats. 
broke that open like Rex showed us, kind of lays down real nice and flat. We'll season that and uh, put a dollop of butter on that once it's on the grill. Should be real good. All right, so to season these guys, we're going pretty simple. We got some black pepper. Then we've got some jalapeno and garlic. I've actually never used this stuff, but the Moors here gave it to me for my birthday, and I love both of those things. So we're gonna try this out on these, on these throats. A little spice on the throats. And finally, can't go wrong, never cook redfish without it. A little Tony Sacherets, Sashiris, Cha Chairs. I've heard it pronounced about every which way, but it's always good. And that is pretty much done. And we got the coals getting hot right now. We'll drop it on there and then we'll put a couple dollops of butter on each one, let that melt, soak into the meat. Man, they're gonna be good. This normally ends up in the trash. All right, so we're gonna slice up some lemon thin. We'll set a piece of lemon on top of the butter on each one. You always wanna roll your citrus before you cut into it. Get some most juices out of it. Is that butter down there, Max? All right, now we're gonna just slice off some thin pieces of butter, put it on there and kind of Position it in places where it's gonna sit on the fish, soak into the fish, and not just run right off. And I don't really think you can go too heavy handed with the butter, so don't be shy. It's gonna keep these guys nice and moist along with the lemon. All right, let's check these guys, see how they're looking. Oh yeah, fins are getting nice and charred. Wanna make sure this meat is white, and the easiest way is to kinda of just fork it, pull it apart on one of them. Man, super juicy but I think that still needs another minute. What do you think? Yep. Yeah. So we'll let these guys go, but while we got it open, we're gonna squeeze some more lemon on these guys, make sure they stay nice and moist. Let these bad boys finish up. That's gonna be good. Grab a beer too. All right, guys, these should be good to go. Oh yeah, they look perfect. You can see like we were talking about, people call them chicken wings because they look kind of like, like wings. Still sizzling. Oh man. That is gonna be good. All right, guys, and that is it. Redfish throats. You can see why people kind of call them chicken wings, or what, what, what else did you call them? Saltwater quail. Saltwater quail. It looks like some kind of bird or waterfowl. But basically, you're just waiting until you can kind of flake this meat apart, make sure it's nice and white and flaky inside. Should be cooked through. Mm. Super juicy, super moist. It's flaking right off. It's got great, great flavor. A nice char on the outside from the, the heat of that grill. Oh my gosh. And again, this often ends up back in the marsh to feed the crabs or in the dumpster. That is fire. The citrus from the lemon, it's like the perfect compliment. Redfish was swimming yesterday. And this is basically, again, kind of the throwaway part. So, I mean, we still have the whole fish to eat at our leisure. It's just a little bonus. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite parts. I mean, I'm like devouring this, man. My bad. Here, you want some? <laughs> yeah, yeah, get on it. You can like pick it up like a chicken wing and like just gnaw on it if you want. How do we do? Chicken wings. Chicken wings. Oh, it legit tastes like chicken. It does kind of taste like chicken. Really? It's like stringy. She doesn't like fish, yeah. so she's uh, interested now. See, like, does that look like chicken? No, not better. <laughs> um. No, that's seriously <laughs> the got best redfish boat I've eaten trade, ever. Yeah. Got the Max Moore endorsement. That yeah. Looks like a bird. It it's is a, a bird. Isn't that funny? Saltwater quail. That's so crazy. Better than good. <laughs> I like it. I'm glad you like it. So Rex is saying even the skin that we left on the bottom side, remember we scaled it, um, and that's so you can eat it. If you don't scale it, you wouldn't want to eat that, but. It's like barbecue chicken skin. Oh my gosh. Wow, it yeah, really is. Yeah, you're right. We could eat the whole thing. Wow. That I did not know. Yeah. That's why I scale them, so you could eat the skin. Paul was asking us why we were scaling this. He said, well, you're not going to eat the skin. I just tried some and he's right. It's like chicken hey, skin Paul, off a barbecue. You do that is cool, skin. man. I did not know that. You eat the skin. Still learning tricks. No, you nailed it. Finger looking good. Like, try to try this skin. Humorous, Paul. It tastes just like barbecue. Oh yeah. 
You know what I mean? You could eat them just like that with That's the skin. That's good. It's not bad, right? Yeah. You've been trading tips all weekend. I know. It's cool, man. That's the best part about harvesting natural ingredients and cooking them with other people. You always learn new tricks for catching them, new tricks for preparing them. We're eating the skin if you want. New to tricks for eating them. All right, guys, the throats are a winner. Everyone's loving them. They're so good. And again, that's a piece that people normally just throw away. Possibly. Awesome. Just talking about going in April, and I want to do Bye, girl. Bye. I definitely I'll see you uh, in like a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. In the spring yeah. At some point. Yeah. Big Later, buddy. Be good. Save some fish for me. Yeah, Thanks right. for everything. Mm -hmm. We'll do it without you. Yeah, Starved man. to death. And be, care be careful going to uh, Alabama, dude. Thanks you for everything. Good. If, yeah, uh, I'll let you know. If you decide to be back there on the 19th, all right, guys, the moors just took off. That's all we got for you today. I hope you learned something about redfish collars, redfish throats, many different names, saltwater quail. Thanks to Rex Del Rey here for showing us the ropes, how to clean them up, how to cook them up. They're so good. They were like the fan favorite. I mean, everyone crowded around like vultures and was eating it. Even Madeline liked it. She doesn't even like fish. Successful catch and cook. But that's it. We got to get this gear loaded up. He's heading back to Houston, and I'm heading on to Alabama tomorrow. Alabama. Alabama. See you guys there.